A seal the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, time for Off the Press. And we usually take you through the pages of our national dailies and also have a guest who joins us this morning, Okunabon Kotaria, as on standby. Good morning and Merry Christmas once again. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning, Nassau, and Merry Christmas. Good morning to you, sir. All right, then let's start off with the Daily Independent newspaper. I would like to look at the big stories on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Now, the board caption reads, At 34.51 trillion naira, banks lending not lifting economy. That's what experts are saying. Says, business still grappling with poor funding. Big story on the Daily Independent, and that's the rider. Away from that, you also find... Sarah urges Buhari to probe alleged missing 3.1 billion naira in finance ministry. Performance enhancing drugs can lead to sudden death, as what Navdak is quoted to say. Account for interest on 34 billion naira in fixed deposits, Senate tells PEF. Rights group condemns police terrorist approach in Uchenwosu's arrest. And please, does what? Uh, not so clear, so we'll just move away from that. Uh, minister vows to probe next cash and carry... Uh, ministers vow to probe next cash and carry supermarket fire incident. Uh, that's unfortunate incident that happened yesterday. And you also have Desmond Tutu made a mark for peace, unity in Africa. It's also a big one on the Daily Independent newspaper. Why federal government's whistleblowing policy has really slowed down. Uh, find out who's saying all of that. And don't join strike in Gigetel's newly inducted doctors. This is some of the headlines on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. And now to the Punch newspapers. Let's see what we can find over here. Big one there says, uh, states revive isolation centers. COVID-19 cases soar. Uh, vaccination grounded at 3.9%. Ogun has uh, 260 bed spaces, 537 bed spaces unoccupied in Lagos. Infections hit 236,000 as military police fail to enforce vaccination. Okoracha Lambas Uzodimma, an IG, as son-in-law, is arrested in church. Also, Amoteko haunts ritualist as Oshun sex worker vomits blood after proposed threesome. Okay, punch. Also on the Punch newspapers this morning, manpower can cause organ damage and uh, sudden death. Navdak warns. FCT pledges probe. Residents loot um, items as massive fire consumes Abuja Mall. Of course, uh, we also uh, spoke about that earlier to clarify on um, the looting story. Review Forex ban on 40 items to save the Naira. Economist tells CBN, Buhari Obasanjo Ramaphosa mourn as anti apathite icon, Desmond Tutu dies at 90. And uh, finally, 55 billion naira crude oil lost to vandalism and others in three months, says NNPC report. All right, let's move away from the punch and check out the leadership newspaper this morning. Bold caption says, a power play in Emo as police arrest Okorocha's son-in-law in church. Uh, you also have riders. Arrest plot by Governor Uzo Dimma to frame up my family, Okorocha is quoted to say. Says security operatives humiliated wife, daughter. Stop raising false alarm, Imo government tackles former governor. Uh, that back and forth this morning. Cholera killing more Nigerians than COVID-19. Experts are saying that. You also find world leaders mourn Desmond Tutu. And that's also uh, dominating all of the papers this morning. Navdak warns against use of sex enhancing drugs. It calls for a letter of concern. Poor monitoring mass 92.4 billion women empowerment projects. Looting spree as next cash and carry goes up in flames. Of course, that has been, uh, you know, clarified uh, that rather citizens or residents were seen helping and carrying out some of those goods. That's the much we can take on the leadership newspaper. And now moving on to the nation this morning. Big one there says, Constitution Review, Senate forecloses state creation. Election matters to end at appeal court and also governors to exercise control over police. 70, year old, uh, 70 years retirement age for all judges. 
Buhari Obasanjo, Obama and others mourn Tutu. World leaders commiserate with Ramaphosa and South Africans. Three die in Shagamu Benin Expressway accident and seven kidnapped in Ikiti and Zaria. Also on the nation this morning, uh, we can see top right corner federal government to in, uh, inducted doctors. Uh, Sean Strike, 32 billion naira debt. Local contractors accuse Ministry of Non-Payment and Okorocha Imo government clash over Wonsu's arrest. Uh, these are the stories that we can share from the nation. Good morning once again, Mr. Inko Taria. Uh, I think it's right morning, that we start brother. with the uh, death of um, um, Archbishop uh, Desmond Tutu. Um, and your thoughts on that very, very sad event yesterday? Well, uh, Archbishop, uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu was an iconic emblem and uh, a picture of peace and the South African struggle for equality. And so his death will be greatly missed by the world and especially South Africa. He lived long. He played his role, and I strongly believe that is one man that will never be forgotten, not just in South Africa, but worldwide. He came, he saw, he conquered, and may his soul rest in perfect peace. He's somebody that will greatly miss, greatly miss in terms of advice. He was quite active in his youth days, but I don't think uh, he should have, he could have done anything more. His time has passed, he's gone to join the saints, as the case may be. So may his soul rest in perfect peace. He'll be greatly missed. His advice will be greatly missed by South Africans and the world at large. He was an international figure. He went beyond the boundaries of South Africa in terms of class. Okay, I, I want you to go on, and there's something I want to quickly ask. Um, someone here uh, shared something. It says, as men like Archbishop Tutu and his generation are passing, I wonder who the great men and women who are shaping the direction of Africa and its geopolit uh, geopolitics are now. Um, and it says, if, I think the quality of leadership across the world has dropped. Uh, do, do you agree with that? And does it worry you uh, that the quality of leadership across the world seems to have dropped? And of course, uh, there doesn't seem to be the likes of Desmond Tutu uh, taking over from where he left off. Well, yes, yeah, the quality has dropped, especially in the third world countries like Nigeria. No doubt about that. Because uh, we have leaders, you know, I keep saying this, with distorted perception of life. You have the likes of Desmond Tutu, the likes of Nelson Mandela, who were altruistic in nature. But the leaders we have right now are egocentric and avaricious. You know, their greed for money is, 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 is inexplicable. Whereas in the case of Desmond Tutu and Mandela, these are human beings who put the nation and humanity first. They maximize that and minimize their own comfort. So they were all out to ensure a better society, a better community, to ensure peace, law, to ensure equality, no discrimination. But the leaders we have right now are leaders who are bent on discrimination, who are bent on Federing or uh, 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 lining their own pockets. They want you to be subservient in order to get what you want. For example, we have the case, the, like what is happening in Nigeria, for, for example, a situation where your loyalty is not to a nation, your loyalty is to an individual. So you have thugs, criminals, uh, uh, bandits being rewarded with political appointments. For the governor to give, give, allow you to apply the ticket of a political party for either House of Reps, House of Assembly, the Senate, or even to get a professional appointment, you must have done some dirty job for that government. It is not based on your intelligence. It is not based on what you can offer. But it is based on how many people you can kill. It is based on how many um, ballot boxes you can carry. And that's why we are happy with the introduction of this electronic transmission of results. And that's why people climb up for it. And that's even why people are even talking about the direct primaries, although it is not uh, uh, proof, but that's why people talk of it. At least it's going to attenuate it, it's going to minimize it. So, uh, unlike mediocrity, as against meritocracy, 
is the, the order of the day right now with our politicians. So it has not to do with what it can offer. It has an intent of intelligence. It has to do a lot with how many people you can kill, how many people you can fight, how many people you can abuse. For example, they want you to abuse your, God, your uh, grandfather. You see a small boy in his 20s, in his 30s, calling the grandfather, you're a thief, you're an idiot, simply because his principal wants him to so do. And that is, that, so we, we've gotten it wrong. We, we, we've lost completely, we have derailed completely. Unlike the days of Mandela and Co., who were our backers, they were there to, to uh, ensure positive change in the society. They were not about themselves. They did emphasize themselves and emphasize the society and emphasize humanity. So that, and that's the base of our society today and the world at large. All right, uh, let's look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Uh, leadership says, power play in Imor as please arrest Okorocha's son-in-law in church. Now, prior to this time, uh, we also had reports saying there was a kidnap. Uh, but I'd like you to share your thoughts on that. Do you think this is a power play? Yes, actually, it is a power play. But there are extenuating circumstances. The issue is this. The hunter, is he guilty of the allegation? If he's guilty of the allegation, then he played into their hands. I agree. There is no love, love, love between Okorata and uh, Hope, who's of them, and the present government. There has been this bellum going on for quite some time because of, and it is occasioned by succession. Okorata wanted his son in law to succeed him, which to me was very ridiculous. That's the point, and that's the point I was trying to make. That our leaders today think of themselves first before thinking of any other person, not minding the, the consequences of their actions. So, and Hope Uzozuma was one of the major targets of Okorocha. So it was, it is like take that time. And this is, I, I'm now in position. I will now use, wield my big stick. I will now ensure that I deal with you for trying to truncate my ambition of becoming a governor. And that is exactly what is going on. It is partly no doubt about that. But what I disagree with is the arrest of Wosu during his mother's outing service. I think that is, uh, I would like, it, is, it, 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 is, it lacks, it, it is insensitive for Hopu Zoduma to have done that. Probably they felt that is the best way and the best time to arrest him. He might escape after that time, but I don't think so. All you need to do is to monitor him. That's all you need to do. And probably allow him to go through the outing service and the reception, then you can arrest him. But not to arrest him just in church during his mother's outing service. I don't think that is that is for it. It's mass of insensitivity. It's not proper. I, I to me, I don't think. But the security agencies probably have a better reason for doing yeah. that. No, probably I mean, they, must, they must have tried in the past and failed and felt this was the best opportunity that they had. And yeah, they just just to quickly mention, um, and I think you, you may also want to respond to this. The the reason. Uh, the initial story was uh, of uh, kidnapping and not arrest by the uh, police force was because the very first video that um, um, was put out concerning his arrest showed lots of gunfire, a lot of manhandling, and then at the end, you know, the person said, oh, they've uh, put uh, Uche Wonsu in the trunk of the car. Um, and it, it seems like that's the way that he was arrested, not in any way that it was professional or as expected of a professional police force. Um, and so that's initially why it was seen as well, a kidnapping. So I want you to, you know, respond to that, you know, the seeming barbaric well, the, the fact, nature the of is, the arrest. The fact is, the fact is, um, is yeah, he was not kidnapped. It has been established he was arrested by the police. Now, they probably did that based on the information at their disposal. You can't be too sure. Maybe he also to have talks and armed men surrounding him. So the best thing to go about it was to scare the crowd away and to also let those in stores and armed men know that they are equally battle ready to there be any resistance. Nobody was killed. Nobody was hurt. They shot into the air. They must have done that professionally. I'm not sure of the facts. 
They must have done that. I'm also not holding this. They must have done that professionally. Normally, when they raid your house, what they do to scare people away is to shoot into the air. They didn't shoot at any particular thing on this. So, I don't think that's an issue. The major concern should be first, why was he arrested? Is it lawful? Was there a warrant of arrest? If there was a warrant of arrest, fine. In the cause of the arrest, was anybody hurt? Nobody was hurt. Was any other person dehumanized? No one was dehumanized. Nobody was brutalized. So why should we be bothered about whether they shot into the air or not? You are talking of fear. It was going to create fear. All Nigerians, even abroad, everywhere. It's normal. When you hear gunshots, you'll be scared. But when you finally realize why these gunshots shots you are made, you will come to terms with the fact that, yes, there is no problem, provided you are not hot. You, none of your properties are not destroyed. I don't think that should be an issue. My major concern is to be why he was arrested, why he was having the housing service for his mother. That is it. Otherwise, he can be arrested. If they come to my house and shoot into the air, all they are trying to do is probably based on information at their disposal, they believe I have talks, I have armed men that could, could resist. And they want to, first of all, uh, the to battle already. And if there is any other help from any other place, to also scare them away. Yeah. I don't think that should uh, be Mr. Ingotara, is it also okay, you know, uh, to, if, if verified, to put a, a suspect in the trunk of a car? No, that is completely wrong. That is unacceptable. Oh, that, that's that what I was referring to initially, not just oh, the gunshots. Okay. No, 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 that's completely unacceptable. That's, I mean, I mean, he cannot be treated with such indignity. Completely unacceptable. Why would you put him in the trunk of a car? You want to kill him before you get to the destination or what? The trunk of the car is not meant for human beings. It's meant to carry boxes. If, if there are times you go to buy your ram or buy your goods and you put it in the trunk of the car, by the time you get to your destination, the goods or ram is dead. Why do you have to subject him to such a uh, form of indignity? It's absolutely wrong. And I think the authorities should stop this nonsense. And the only way they can stop this nonsense is by ensuring that all those who are expecting this arrest should be dealt with. Should they subject any individual to such indignity? It is completely unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. So, but, but what, what do you do. make of the fact that... They can be handcuffed and put uh, at the back of the car, in the middle, with one security objective and the other on his left and on his right. This, that is enough. Why put him in the trunk of the car? Why? What has he done? Even if you commit murder, you are not supposed to be put in the trunk of the car. And that's the worst crime anybody can commit, murder. So that's completely unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. All right. But, but over time, um, I'm sure that we'll definitely just move away from this. Uh, it feels like it has become the order of the day where you find state actors using... Uh, that's what I'm exactly. That's what I'm saying. Where, where you find state actors using... That is lawless. State you live in a country that is lawless. Lawless society. Including Mr. President himself is lawless. And if you ask me, I can prove it. Where a court will admit somebody to bail and the president will say no, so it's also lawless. And when the top is rotten, what do you expect? The bottom will also be rotten. Right. That is the problem we have in this country. Right. We live in a lawless society where the rule of law is the case and administration of justice rather than the bottom. All right, Ms. Angotara, um, also on the punch this morning, um, of course we can't not talk about it. It says here, states revive isolation centers, uh, COVID-19 cases soar, and uh, vaccination grounded at 3.9%. It also states about uh, 260 bed spaces in Ogun State and 537 in Lagos. Uh, the Omicron virus seems to be spreading, and uh, is Nigeria ready, as it seems? You're asking if Nigeria is ready? Yes, Nigeria is ready to make more money for the committees that will be set up as a result of the search. If you say that we are ready, why do you have to shut down the uh, centers that are open? What was the rationale behind that? Now they are saying they are reviving, they are reopening because they are going to award more contracts. But I want to shut it down. It's like a clinic. COVID-19 has come to stay. We will keep having mutation, variant. For it, it's like malaria now. It's like typhoon now. It has come to stay. So what are you shutting down in the center? 
Yeah, whether they short or not. It's just like malaria, it's just like cycle. What you should expect is the building of more centers for this COVID-19. I'm not shutting that. So after this variant, when it is contained to a very large extent, then they shut down again. Then they now spend more money to start renovating, to start buying fresh things. To... Why? Why? It's not necessary. So lack of planning. That's to tell you how rudderless our leaders are. Today. Very rudderless. They don't plan. They don't think ahead. COVID-19 is more or less like malaria and typhoid right now. So you don't need to shut down centers. It's completely unnecessary. And that should not even make any headlines. Why should that make headlines? Maybe the paper lacks what to publish. News. But that shouldn't make headlines. That they are opening more hospitals, is that news? COVID-19 centers are like hospitals. So is that news? That they are opening up more hospitals? When they cannot even take care of the Even also rock clinic. Asu Rock Clinic cannot even carry out a minor surgery, according to the wife of the president. There is no needle in there in Nassau Rock Clinic. So what is the news about me? What we want to hear is that we now have world-class hospitals all over, in at least 36 states of the federation. Those are the kind of things where, so that you reduce the cost of uh, uh, the medical bills. If the federal government should set up these hospitals, like general hospitals, to find out that the commoner, those at the bottom of the second order, will be able to work it and afford medical bills, attention, treatment. And not to sort to private hospitals where you have the best. But I tell you, you're going to almost sell your life to save your life. Because the bills are high. The charges are quite high. These are the things the federal government should address. And not to have on COVID, 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 COVID is like any other disease right now. You should have the centers. But build hospitals, work like hospitals, so that we end this medical tourism. It's even a shame that the president is constantly traveling out of the country for medical tourism. Isn't that not a shame? After six, going to seven years? So we shouldn't be talking of COVID centers. That is no news, as far as I'm It's no news whatsoever. We shouldn't be talking of COVID centers, talking of more COVID centers, reviving COVID centers, and so forth. And what, 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 is, what is the news there? That's no news. It's not news as far as I'm concerned. All right. If I hear that what is taking the president out of the country can it has been provided for in this country, uh -huh. I'll be happy to hear such a thing. Whether it's hack, whether it's the ear, the ear problem, nose problem, whatever problems they have, we have the qualified doctors and we also have the facilities. Okay. And that will make peace. All right, let's also look at the Daily Independent and, and share your thoughts on this one. Serap urges Buhari to probe alleged missing $3.1 in finance ministry. Should the president be urged to uh, go ahead with probe? Don't we have mechanisms already that should, and uh, agencies that yeah, were created should, by government to so swing into action without necessarily asking the president to go ahead with the probe? Let me comment, Sarah. I haven't said that. The president, we need to urge the president because if either he's not aware, in his own world, there is nothing he's aware of. If either he's not aware or he's not willing to, because there is still inertia on the part of the president to prosecute his loyalists. I have a plethora of uh, uh, cases to back, to back my assertion. So he needs to be urged. Otherwise, Mr. President, I will tell you, it's, a, it's on a long sojourn in the land of lethargic sleep and inertia. Nothing concerns him. He's not aware of anything. He's only aware of when the, the, the next trip is going to embark on. Whether the trip makes sense, the trip is reasonable, the trip is, is what, what, what is, that is his own concern. He wants to embark on the next trip, trying to make up for the uh, trips he never made when he was head of state. So every single even when you're supposed to send a minister, a special advisor, he wants to be there. And he goes there talking nothing. Talking nothing, making no contribution whatsoever. So he has to be asked because tomorrow he said, a man who sent uh, the Federal General of Police to Bruno, got to Bruno a few weeks after and was told that the Federal General of Police never got to Bruno. And he said he was not aware. That when he got, he got down to Abuja, he went to investigate. And that was the end of the matter. So we need to urge him. He might not be aware. He might not be aware. Let us urge him. And without Mr. President, I agree we need mechanisms in place. But do we have those institutions with us? And those mechanisms are controlled by the presidency. 
If one day Malami should now say, oh, please, don't investigate this, most of these institutions will not investigate. The granting legal machinery will not be set in motion against the institution or against the perpetrator. And that's why most times these things are made public so that the hands of the government are affected. But in most cases, they are not even bothered. They, they are not even concerned. Even when they are made public. Not to talk about when they are not made public. You can urge them to investigate, to investigate from now to tomorrow, unless Mr. President gives the go ahead. They will not investigate. And even when they commence the investigation, if it's the president or the presidency, which includes Malami, is interested in that matter, and wants that investigation, it will end. So when Sherab is doing what he's doing, is actually making these issues public, so that there will be a lot of pressure from Nigeria to ensure, or even if Mr. President fails to, then it's on record, and whoever succeeds it might want to commence investigation into this issue. Yeah, but don't you think we should, we should get to a place where it's not dependent on a go-ahead from the presidency or not? That is what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's a bad system we find ourselves in. And like China probably is not expecting the uh, investigation to commence immediately. Mr. President might not even be interested. That's the point I'm making. But it's also laying the foundation for those that will succeed the president. So say, oh, this is what we have that wants to investigate These are the issues that we want you to investigate. Because if Mr. President is interested in those involved, and uh, his aficionados, and uh, his loyalists, nothing will come out of this clamor. They will talk and talk and talk, and nothing will happen. Or they will comment and, and, and join the matters, investigate, and investigate them forever. Like the Salamis case uh, uh, panel against Magu. You have the issue of the DCP that's involved in hush puppy. You have the issue of Baba, Baba Shawa, the former LGA. Yeah, it's not a lot of them. They'll just say, okay, let us just start this investigation to end this matter in the public domain. And nothing will come out of it. So Sarah is just Sarah just wants the world to know. So that if tomorrow Mr. President leaves and he has a successor that has the interest of Nigeria and Nigerians at heart. He might commence with it. But then, do you need Mr. President? No. Does Sarah need to make this point? No, you all have the institutions. You have ESCs. Why don't you ESCs on his own? Go ahead to do carry out the investigation. But it will not. Because you wait for Malami. You see, I want to do the ball. Uh, Malami is where it is. will come out of it. Malami is on the mess in all kinds of work. All kinds of work. Make them a major fraud that are taking place in this country, Malami's name is involved. What has come out of it? Nothing. But that, that's just it. But as we need institutions, and not individuals. Mr. President is out, can he be investigated, tried and jailed when he leaves office? That's why you need institutions. And in any civilized life, even Mr. President says, do not investigate. The institution will say, no, we will go ahead to investigate. Because we have the mandate so, so do. Either constitutionally or by statute. We have that mandate. But it's not the case here. If you go ahead, then you'll be removed the next minute. And people will just shout for two, three, four days, one week, and after that is all over. What are the former CJs? What has happened to you? So, Punabo Inkotaria, um, thank you very much for kicking off uh, the week with us and of course uh, sharing you your go. thoughts on these very very important stories making headlines this morning uh, we wish you a very very uh, interesting celebration uh, ahead Maybe, are we done? yes we are thank <laughs> you for being part of the show uh, we do appreciate your are time are, are we done <laughs> yes we are <laughs> okay all right <laughs> good morning are you came back to cognition or so no problem all right. <laughs> Thank you very much for staying with us so far. We'll take a short break. Uh, what happened on this day in history many, many years ago, we'll be sharing with you. And right after that, our first major conversation starts off uh, here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa.